two men, two microphones, one movie, a couple of beers, and some wildly outlandish critiques about the movies you may or may not love. The following review will have massive spoilers and possibly offensive commentary. This content may not be suitable for little bitches. Brought to you by Goat Straw Entertainment and some liquid courage. Hey, welcome back, movie lovers, to another episode of Not Your Everyday Critics. I am your host, George Lugo. And I am your other host, Manny Rivera. And if you've never seen the show before, what we do is rate, review, and critique movies of all genres, budgets, everything under the sun. And with over 500,000 movies, there's definitely a lot that we have to go through. So we're going to put another one under our belt with this movie, um, which is... Return to Return Oz. Return to Oz. Return so to this Oz. is a <laughs> this is a 1985 uh, Disney film. It is the sequel to the original Wizard of Oz. So I mean, um, this movie, it's kind of it's kind of in a weird place for me and like and just just people in general because it's not like a very beloved movie. You know, it's not a very beloved film. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the movie before. Um, it's super freaking weird, man. It's very different. It's definitely it's, out uh, there. It's out a there. it's a film that's definitely out there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a fun little film, but it's I definitely mean, it's fun. Just, and uh, it actually, it actually, for of all the Oz movies, I mean, it's not it's not a, a fuck ton, but there yeah, no, there are some. But um, there are some drinks to go with these movies. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes David. Hey. David Raby, thank you very much. David Raby, would you uh, would you make for us, David? Yeah, he's going. No, yeah, let him get back into this camera. <laughs> Um, uh, this is a Wizard of Oz cocktail, his name. Okay. And it's got, um, a uh, coconut liqueur, a melon liqueur as the main, I guess, uh, okay. alcoholic stuff. So I'm imagining this is going to be pretty sweet because it has a little splash of orange juice and like three ounces of pineapple juice. Ooh. So visually this looks, it looks awesome. really good. It looks I mean, really I'm, I'm very, I almost like, feel like I should be sitting on a beach. Right. Freaking drinking this. You know what I mean? That's exactly what I feel like right now. This is, this is actually very uh, appealing to the eye, David. This is awesome. Yeah, I like this. this. I like this. I'm really trying to up the bartending game. So <laughs> I really appreciate it. And that's appreciated. These are fucking <laughs> awesome. All right. All right. So, uh, cheers, boys. Cheers, cheers, boys. Cheers. Mm. Yeah. Bro, that's so good. Yeah. Ooh. I love this. <laughs> not as sweet as I thought it was going to be. Is it's not as sweet. Tasty. Yeah. But that wow. pineapple and that coconut. You could taste that. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Wow. I fucking dig this. That is so nice. I'm very into that. I'm very into that. Got to take it easy with that. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Because I'll saying. drink that shit real quick. <laughs> All right. Wow. So, Return to Oz, 1985, starring Farusa Balk. You, so you might hot. know her as Vicky Valancourt. So hot. <laughs> this was her very, very first she was movie. A kid, Manny, what the fuck? This was her very, very first movie. She she got this. She got this movie. She got the part for this role when she was nine years old. Her very first, her very first feature. So wow, let's crazy. jump into the plot summary and then we'll start the review. Let's do it. Dorothy, saved from a psychiatric experiment by a mysterious girl, is somehow called back to Oz when a vain witch and the Gnome King destroy everything that makes the magical land beautiful. Ooh, crazy. Yeah, so <laughs> one of the things that I really uh, enjoyed about this movie is that um, it's very true. It's very true to the books. Um, I haven't read all the books. But I do know for a fact that they this is the one that sticks the most, like almost to the T to the to return the the return of Oz book. Oh, really? So that's pretty cool. You know, I like it. I like it when they do stuff like that. When they try and they try and stick to the um the content. Yeah, you know? to the original passage yeah. or something, which is great. Yeah, I love it when they can get like most of what's in that book onto the screen. And you know, they have to leave some stuff out because you can't fit everything in or whatever well yeah you have to you have to basically but, you have to cut out a lot to, yeah. to tell us tell the story tell the visually story. Yeah. you know yeah but from this from this movie uh i i, I enjoyed it it was fun i, I yeah I we got really a good. we got a lot to go through so let's jump yeah, there's definitely quite let's a jump bit. into our first category here the cast all right so we have uh farusa bulk Sexy. as dorothy 
when and he not keeps, as a child. He keeps calling her sexy. Right? And she was the fucking not as a child. child. Mm-hmm. Perv. Right. Uh, Nicole uh, Nicole Williamson is Doctor Worley slash the Gnome King. Uh, John Marsh is Nurse Wilson and Mombi. So it's Joan. Joan, I think. Yeah. Uh, Piper Laurie is Aunt M. Matt Clark is Uncle Henry. Michael Sundin is TikTok. TikTok. Tim Rose is also TikTok. There's a lot of TikTok voices here. Oh, okay. Um, just a little quick tidbit. It looks like Tim Rose also voiced uh, uh, Admiral Akbar. Oh, really? Yeah. Shit. At least that's a, the thumbnail. It's a trap. It's, it's a, a trap. trap. As you can see here, the Death Star. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Barrett also the voice of TikTok. Oh, I guess Sean Barrett's the voice. I don't know. Uh, There's three different people playing TikTok. He's uh, a very complex character. Him, yeah. Inside of you. Kenny Baker in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter. Mac Wilson is Belina. That's Belina. actually the very chicken. interesting. The chicken. Yeah. It's a man's voice. What? What? Yeah. Uh, Denise Breyer is Belina. Oh, so Matt Wilson, oh, I think, Matt did, Wilson the did the puppet animatronic. Oh, animatronic. Whatever. And then yeah, Denise yeah, yeah. Breyer's Belina. Yeah, there you we're, go. We're off to a great start. Uh, Brian Henson. Oh, wow. I didn't know. He voices he voiced Jack, Jack Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead. That's awesome. That's you will bow cool. down me before Son of God. <laughs> Stuart Harvey Wilson. Jack Pumpkinhead as Stuart Lorraine. Okay. All right. All right. Whatever. Lyle Conway's Gump. Gump. So he's the voice of Gump. Stephen Norrington. Awesome. And also Gump, I believe he does the animatronics. Just in case is Scarecrow. I love that name. That's crazy. That's a great Just name. In Just in case. That's a great fucking name. That's so Dude, awesome. Your, parent, your parents are awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, Just in case? Just in case what? Oh, man. <laughs> they had fun with your name. That's Fuck freaking, yeah, that's they legit. did. Uh, John Alexander. Is a uh, cowardly lion and also one of the wheelers. Uh, Deep Roy, Tin Man, Deep Roy. That's a crazy name, too. Deep Roy? Deep, like deep. And deep. then Roy. Balls deep. Balls deep. Balls deep, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at him, he looks like the freaking uh, Oompa Loompa in. Uh, to be honest, that could be him. That could be him? <laughs> could be him. Yeah, he looked like. Oompa it looks Loompa like from, him. Uh, the Charlie and Chocolate Factory movie? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It looks like him. Uh, Emma Ridley is Ozma. Sophie Ward is Mombi 2. Fiona Victory is Mombi 3. Uh, Pons Mar is the lead wheeler, the no messenger. Wow. He also plays, and I believe it's not credited on here, but he also plays, um, he's the guy that wheels Dorothy into the, um, to, oh, yeah, to yeah, electroshock yeah. therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rachel Ashton, Wheeler, Robbie Barnett, Wheeler. Let's do a few more of these because they look like they're mainly Wheelers. He's wheeling and they're dealing. All, they're all Wheelers, so. Wheeling and deal. I think we could just we could just give our nod because they're all just like <laughs> yeah. sub-Wheelers. So give all our right. nod to everybody uh, who participated in the film. Thank you very much. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Oh, it's so hard not to just drink it all. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to down it. I, I really do. I just want to drink the whole thing. Just want to down it. I want to drink it. Fill it up again. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's, just, it's really sweet. It's really good. Yeah, no, that, it's not that, that it's like really sweet, but it's like it's, it's just perfect. perfect. It's just perfect. It's tasty. It's tasty. Yeah. It's, tasty. Yeah. it's freaking. It's refreshing. That is a good fucking That's drink. a really good wow. fucking drink. Damn. Let's do the intro. So the Wizard of Oz takes place, I believe, six to seven months after the original tornado. They did, yeah, six six months. Yeah, ago. and um, Dorothy is uh, in her room, and she's looking like I believe she's looking out the window, uh, and like you see like the the sky, and like it zooms in, and then it's like Return to Oz, and it keeps zooming in on her, and uh, she's having issues sleeping. Same. She hasn't slept like a good night's sleep, and since the tornado because she keeps talking about and you know bringing up all the stories that she did like in oz you know with like, the scarecrow tin man and whatnot Much better in oz and then An- auntie m and you know and the uh, her uncle, uncle henry uncle henry yeah uh they don't know what to do they're kind of like because this movie takes place like uh, in the early 30s 40s i don't know well it, it, they said 
Turn of the century. So Turn of the like century. No, late yes. Eighteen hundreds. Yes, that was not even. Ni- it's not even nineteen hundred yet. Yeah. He's so like, I, I think it was machine. two months. He said electronics. Yes, I think it was two months before. Okay. Yeah, I believe it was two months before. The turn yeah, of the century. They were saying winter's coming. And yeah, all yeah, shit. winter's like, coming. Oh, and all that stuff. Oh my god! Like, um, so they don't. They weren't sure what to do. And then, uh, <laughs> Uncle Henry's like looking at the newspaper, and it's like it's so funny the way it's cut out. It's like cut out in like a bizarre, like torn, weird shape, but yeah. it's all perfectly rounded. It's not like you ripped it out of the paper. I'm like, who would, who goes through that trouble for that clipping? You know, it was so odd. It was weird. <laughs> So odd. And then the paper sitting right next to him is perfectly, it's just a paper. You know? <laughs> I think they did that just so you could focus on the article. You know, they're, yeah. they're, you're focused on the article. So she ends up going, uh, t- t- he, he asks uh, Auntie M, how can we spend money on a doctor? Like when we don't have money to spend on it. And like, well, she hasn't slept right in six months, you know, and she needs to go. She's always talking about a place that doesn't exist. You know, she's not like, she's not socializing with other people. Yeah, people suck. I don't blame her. Yeah. So they end up dishing out the money. They set off the next day, NTM and Dorothy set off the next day to go to the psychiatric uh, hospital or home, I guess. Um, and on their way out, Toto like jumps and like follows them. I was yeah. like, and like, he's just like following them. And I was like, Oh, Toto, hurry up, like, hurry up. And like, they like, I was like, Toto. Go home, Toto. Go home, Toto. I felt bad. I'm like, like we need Toto on this journey. We do. <laughs> yeah, like, I think he knew that something was up. Like, so instead of Toto, we had a chicken. We'll get there. Is... We'll get there. Um, so they arrive at the the, the psychiatric hospital, and now uh, Dorothy's being evaluated by the um, Doctor Wor- Worley. Worley, I think yeah. it was, and. He's asking her all these questions about Oz, and Dorothy's a little reluctant to answer some of the questions. And Auntie M's like, "Go ahead, you know, answer the questions, you know, because he needs a full, you know, psychiatric like how crazy evaluation." And so he's like, "Oh, I think your problem's a simple one. We can solve that with electricity." Yeah, <laughs> right. It's a new invention. <laughs> it's a new invention, right? He pulls out this like it's like a huge box. It's like a huge box, and it has like a face. You know, it's so bizarre. Because it has like the these dials, the dials the on it. It's got a slider for the tongue and the mouth. So crazy to me how they use like that kind of electrotherapy to try to get rid of whatever the fuck's going on with I you. Think they still, you do know, that afterwards they, when they, they don't go really. That, I don't be, think they really do that anymore. Electrotherapy. No, I don't think they do a, that anymore. But that's not a that's then, not a thing for a long time, I believe. Then, but I mean, they had just discovered electricity and like, well, maybe it has some. You know, some medical benefits. Nope, it's just killing patients. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of them. That's that's another thing I thought that was so crazy about this movie is like she ends up going to basically a mental asylum. Yeah. <laughs> and like an 1800s mental asylum. It's not even a good kind. It's fucking oh, not even a good kind. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. So we There's start. Like lobotomies going on. And yeah. Shit. So we start meeting some of the characters that could be in the movie. So obviously Dr. Worley, like he later, see him later as the Gnome King. And then his uh, assistant, we also see later as Princess Mombi. And so uh, Dorothy has to stay overnight so they can do the procedure in the morning or in the evening. And then she's going to go home with them in the morning. And um, she gets walked to her room and she sees one of the other assistants. He's pushing a cart. So like every, very like fucking ominously down very the hall. ominously down the hall. He like turn, he turns and like you hear the squeaking and you see like turns is all creepy and he's like, like pushing the car down. Next Dorothy, like yeah. weird. Shit. <laughs> I like I really like uh, a lot of the tones like with uh, with Wizard of Oz movies especially because they give you a little foreshadowing on what the characters are going to be mm-hmm. in Oz. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, so Dorothy goes to her room and she's kind of. Looking around, it's like a fucking shitty room. The desk is covered in dust. There's only one window, and it's like all the way off the very top of the fucking ceiling <laughs> off the floor. Yeah. And then and she's looking. Now, do yeah, we? she's looking through the window, and she sees like a little face appear. Like, and she turns around. There's that a, part tripped me out. When she turns little, around, you still see the reflection. I'm like, yeah. who's this bitch? Yeah. So there's a girl behind her, um, and she's holding a pumpkin. And we don't hear the little girl's name. But we find out later that, way, that like yeah, way later. Um, so she goes in. She's like, she's like, hey, what are you in here for, Dorothy? You know, he's like, oh, I can't sleep. He's like, 
Oh, okay, that's a bummer, basically. And she's like, it's Halloween soon, and gives her a pumpkin. <laughs> it's so weird, right? Sorry, it's you can't sleep, but here's soon. a pumpkin. And then she's like, I gotta go. And then she leaves, and that's basically our intro. And after that, the, whole, the, movie, whole, movie takes the whole movie takes the off. Movie but takes that's, off. that's about 15 minutes in, so... Yeah. Um, in the intro, we get introduced, you know, to Dorothy, Aunt M, Uncle Henry, uh, Dr. Worley, the Gnome King, the assistant, Mombi, the Wheeler guy. We get introduced to a few characters, including the little girl who t- we find out <laughs> later is going to be Ozma. Yeah. So we get a, we get a nice little introductory of that. So yeah. That's really cool. I like I like I like the the continuity for for stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always found that to be interesting as well. It's yeah. like a little, yeah, like you said, like foreshadowing. Yeah, a little foreshadowing. The characters' counterparts are going to be in that, you know, I don't know, made up land, fantasy land. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, could be real. Could be real. <laughs> could be, could real. be real. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, never been. No idea. Never yeah. been. No idea. Heard lots about it. Never been there though. <laughs> Heard lots about it, guy. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So let's head on to our next category here. We are going to be doing the writing. So, uh. Well, for screenplay, we have Walter Murch, uh, Gil Dennis, based on the novels by L. Frank Baum uh, for Ozma of Oz and The Land of Oz. He doesn't have a ton of credits. Okay. He has five, okay? So his most recent being, oh, wow, Coup 53, 2019. Coup 53? Never heard of it. I, I Never heard of it. That is. But this is the crazier part. He hasn't done a movie since Return to Oz. Oh, that's the gap. 1985, 2019. Oh, Damn, shit. what the fuck? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that's a long time. That's a big gap. Maybe he was like uh, Richard Moran, uh, Rick Moranis. Rick Moran, that's entirely kids, possible. You know? When his wife died, yeah, it's possible. Uh, yeah. One of the, one of the credits is missing. It says four out of it says four out of five results, but there's supposed to be five credits, so one's missing. Oh, weird okay. fucking. But he did the Black Stallion in uh, THX 1138 previous. Ooh, that is a good movie. Yeah. All right, so I mean, that's, cool. that's uh, we got some that's some good stuff there, even though there wasn't there wasn't many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gil Dennis, uh, let's see, Gil Dennis has nine uh, credits to his name. Okay, did intermission before Return to Oz, after Return to Oz, he did Home Fries, On My Own, Without Evidence, Riders on the Purple Sage, The Man on Lincoln's Nose, Walk the Line, The Man on Lincoln's Nose. He did Walk the Line. Ooh, that's, that's a good, good. fucking ah. movie, and then forever, it looks like a like an indie film, 2015. Okay, I, so, okay. The only one that I know is Walk the Walk Line. the Line is the the only one. Yeah, it is uh, what it is. Interesting yeah. titles though. Um, as far as as far as writing goes, I do believe that they did a sufficient job of not overcomplicating the children's book. I agree. You know, everything was very simple and it's easy very to simple, very easy to follow. It was, but they also made it, they also made it like dark and eerie, but it was still kind of family friendly. Friendly. I didn't sense any of the darkness at all in this movie. Oh, really? I mean, I, I, I think I felt it that way. Like when I, think I saw it, like the cut off heads. Yeah, it's definitely because it's supposed to be a family friendly film because it's released by Disney. But there was a lot of things in there that were a little not family friendly. We also have to imagine that the um, the rating system was a little bit different in the eighties. You can yeah. get away with a lot more. Yeah, so I okay, think I think fine. today's standards that wouldn't. I don't know if that would be a PG thirteen film or it might be PG thirteen. But yeah, no, there's, there's it's just PG. Oh, so I oh, think wow. now okay. and now I think it would be that PG-13 would definitely for PG thirteen sure. for okay. sure. Yeah, because of like the head and whatnot, the the, the like dark and sinister undertones, like the gnome king. Uh, I mean, you got the what is it the, de- the deadly de- desert desert yeah there's a Those lot of things that guys went in there and they just psh, that's it fell apart there's a lot you of elements I mean? there's a lot of elements of death in this movie <clears throat> yeah which um, in the original Wizard of Oz there was some elements of death but the movie overall was very light yeah it was a lighter was film I feel like a lot lighter um, was there anything about the writing that stood out to you not necessarily not really. all the dialogue was fine I think. Okay. Yeah, um, that's good then. The writing was actually, you know, I I actually enjoyed it. It was actually there were some good. things in the movie that were just kind of weird to me, like <laughs> Welcome to Oz. <laughs> well, no, like for the Gump, mm-hmm. like oh the Gump. Okay, that thing yeah. was just created out of nowhere, and like all I, all I feel is pain. Like I can't imagine <laughs> <laughs> he's like what? he's made out of fucking 
He's furniture. Yeah, furniture and he's ropes. Got like, yeah, like <laughs> fucking his, his wings that the they're palm that, tree leaves. They're palm tree good? leaves. Yeah. I was like, oh my if God, I had a stomach, a, I'd definitely be sick. How, of do, how do you how do you get enough lift with those? Yeah. And then, <laughs> All like, right. It just didn't make any sense. Like he's like he's yeah. he has sentience. He's like, oh, I feel his pain. Like I don't know how it was created. <laughs> he goes, oh, oh man, it was much better when I was just hanging on a wall. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my, what the fuck is this? Thing? <laughs> Brought me back to life. <laughs> you know what? I one of the things that I thought was interesting was is actually TikTok. Him, I like him a lot. Because TikTok, cool. he's not alive. Yeah, Which he is, kept saying that. Yeah, I like yeah. how they kept... Hey, I'm not alive. I am a machine. I am a machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. He's like, I am not alive. That's the reason I wasn't turned to stone. And never will be, thank goodness. Yeah, like, like fuck all you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm made of metal. It's, it's interesting because he's not alive, but he does have a personality. Yeah. So that's he, an interesting like concept. Too. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. Yeah. That I think they could probably only really get away with like this type of film. You know, an Oz-based film. Because it's all, it's all fantasy. Yeah. It's very creative. Definitely. Like yeah. Jack Pumpkinhead. That's, I liked him too. He was definitely like a, a good character in that, you know, kind of like Scarecrow ditzy kind of moment and everything like yeah, that. Like I, I actually enjoyed him. Severe mommy issues. It's exactly. That's why. Can I, can call, I call, you call you mom? <laughs> you know? Call you mom. Good night, mom. Like, what the fuck? He's like, no, he's going to creep. I want to see him. <laughs> I want to see him do like a spoof of like him. Being Norman Bates in Psycho. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Mom? Mom? <laughs> That's just mother. She's watching uh, over me. No, overall, though, the writing, I, I enjoyed the writing. Pretty I solid. I think yeah, it was I did. actually pretty good. I think we can move on to our next category, which is uh, direction. Direction, sir. And the director for this is Walter Scott Merch. Merch. Which, uh, he's been doing film since uh, 1969. Nice. Yeah. yeah. 69. <laughs> Some of the films that he's done is uh, THX 1138, Apocalypse Wait. Now. He, he's also did this, he also did the screenplay. Same guy. Yeah. He directed THX 1138? Yes. Well, he worked on it. I was going to say George yeah, Lucas he, no, directed he worked on it. THX 1138. Okay, let's see. One. Hold on. Actually, he doesn't have a lot of credits to his name. He has two movies to his name. Two movies. Two movies. But Return to Oz. Him a lot of movies. He could have helped co-direct, but these are the movies he directed himself. Himself, yeah. personally, yeah. So we got Return to Oz, 1985, yeah. and then we have Star Wars, The Clone Wars. So he directed a fuck ton of the, of the show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Damn. But he yeah. did help uh, on other movies like Apocalypse Now, Godfather 1, 2, and 3, American nice. Graffiti, uh, The Conversation, the English Patient. Uh, he, he actually helped out in a couple of those, and... Got uh, an Academy Award with it. So that's actually pretty cool. Sick. That is pretty cool, actually. Yeah. So that is pretty cool. Definitely definitely got a little bit underneath him. Um, <laughs> he definitely he definitely has uh, some work there. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, move on to our next category, uh, soundtrack and score. See, so the soundtrack, actually. David Shire. <clears throat> I wasn't too blown away with the soundtrack. The, soundtrack, it wasn't, the soundtrack's it's, mediocre, to be honest. It's mediocre. You know, it's, it's, it's mediocre. I Which is kind of a bummer because, like, they could have done whimsical movie. They could have really. I felt like just with a little bit of music would have probably spiced this movie up. Yeah, yeah. So they tried to do a lot of like, like dark, eerie music, kind of like mysterious. Ah, uh, it was. It didn't. There was like it didn't, it didn't have that feeling to it though. It just yeah. It, yeah, yeah. I think if they would have just changed the tone of the the movie with a little bit of music, it would have. Yeah. This movie would have been yeah. a little bit better. You know, it would have been a little Even bit if they got of a different guy like John Williams would have. Fucking knocked it out of John the John Williams. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I mean, it's it still had that that Oz kind of music. You if you guys remember, you know, the original Oz had the the spontaneous noises here and there, and it wasn't like a full on like musical kind musical of kind of thing. Yeah. But it, it had that you know feeling here and there. This one's the same thing. It didn't have like a whole freaking. Uh, tone to the whole movie there were just certain areas where it just popped up every once in a while and then it just you know it was just straight dialogue yeah you know I mean? yeah so i think if they were to actually add more music into it it definitely would have came out a lot better i'm glad for sure with it's a bummer route, because though. this guy actually is a pretty good composer he has 156 uh credits to his name a lot of them are uh a lot of them are probably like b movies but there are some in here that are actually pretty big like he 
some of the uh, music for Zodiac. Um, let me see. I don't know that movie. Promise to Keep. Uh, I know my first name is Steven. He's got a, he's got a few in here. God bless the child. My first name is Steven. Echoes in the darkness. I mean, a lot of them are a lot of B movies. He did some music for Short Circuit. I mean, oh, oh nice. Short Circuit. Yeah. That's so I mean, he does have some big movies to his name, but mm-hmm. he it seems like he does do a lot of B movies. But I mean, they trusted him enough to do like big blockbusters. Like Zodiac was a big fucking movie. You know. Yeah. yeah. That's not a that's not a small thing. And that I movie was Reddit pretty was successful. That. Yeah, that movie was pretty successful. So. Um, yeah, I think I think we can kind of just pass on yeah, the music because it's a little lack. It's a little lackluster. Yeah. 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 A little lackluster. Like there wasn't any particular score it wasn't that like, stood it out. It wasn't like bad, but it wasn't like good. There wasn't anything I mean? that stood so out particularly. It, it definitely didn't. It was there just, wasn't really much of it that stood out. It was just out. there. It was just there. But yeah. I mean, whatever. It's unfortunate. Hey, but I mean, can we hire you? We just need noise for the movie. You got it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's move on to uh, uh, wardrobe. Wardrobe. Ooh, wardrobe. lots to say so, about this. Uh, costume design is uh, Raymond Hughes. This guy. So Raymond Hughes, born April 1907 in Bangor. He's born in Way- Wales. He's Welsh. 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 He's done movies like Return of Oz, Jewel of the Nile, uh, The Palace Years. He died in December. He died in December 2015. Oh, shit. 78. That's pretty old. I don't even know if I'm, I'm going to make it that to be. You know what? I wasn't too upset at some of the costume designs. I like the wheelers. The wheelers, actually, uh, they look pretty damn cool. It was interesting, but I can't imagine what pain those people must be in to actually be in there and, like, wheeling around. <laughs> it just seemed it felt like it would hurt your back so bad. I'm um, for sure that oh, hurt. Oh, yeah. No, for I sure that hurt. I actually didn't get to it. I didn't get to listen to any of the interviews with the, the main wheeler guy. Right. But just ba- based on the way that the, the design was, like you could see that they were like holding, they were holding like those wheels, they had you know, and they had something. to be, that means you had to have like a lot of core strength to keep that posture right, yeah. you know, because yeah. you have to have that perfect hump. posture, the yeah. hump. And some, if you notice that uh, some of them, uh, <laughs> a lot of their film time is, uh, they are on their wheels most of the time, but they needed to take breaks. And they, and they had to had put to, their ass they, down. They had to put, yeah. Fuck yeah. That's they had to do it every single time. They're like, we, could, we can't do this or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but I mean. But I mean, as far as the costume goes. As far as the costume goes, they, they were pretty legit. I, I actually. I, I kind of costumes. enjoy it. It had like a, a weird post-apocalyptic feel to it. And then like they had like, they had, I wouldn't say like it's incredibly post-apocalyptic. It's almost like post-apocalyptic meets like. Like uh, cyber cyberpunk, because it's kind of got like the neon like uh, design on it. A little bit, yeah, yeah. So it's like a little bit of steam, a little bit of cyber, post apocalyptic. But then they have the skull cap with the faces on it, so that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, so when they look, awesome. when they're looking down, you see like their yeah, like a face. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, one of my favorites is actually uh, Jack Pumpkin. Yeah, he's, Jack is he's great. Got a, uh, he's got a pretty cool look about him too. I mean, like if you pay attention, like when they're walking. Uh, He's in the hallway like, with Dorothy and everything like yeah. that. He's yeah, he's moving like kind of like, uh, like limp-ish kind of ordeal. Yeah, but you see like this like it's supposed to be like branches out of his elbow and his knees when he's walking and doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, I like the vest that he had on. That freaking pumpkin head's got to be freaking heavy. Whoever's if that guy's wearing it and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. The I, scenes I, where I he had the, to walk like, for sure. I like the whole look about him. It was actually really cool to see that. Yeah, that he's probably design. one of my favorite characters in, in the movie for yeah. sure. Yeah. Him and TikTok, I think. TikTok is great. So TikTok, yeah, TikTok's awesome. TikTok's great. So they had to get like a, a contortionist to do this to do his thing. So it wasn't just a guy like sitting in there. So he had to sit and like flex backwards and look down. So he was basically backwards because the camera that they had, because the, the dome shape and the thick legs, for some reason they couldn't they couldn't fit a person just sitting in there. Even like you know a little person, they couldn't fit in there. Wow. So they had to get a contortionist to go in, bend, and then look through like their legs at the camera to see where he was walking. Oh wow! Fuck, dude. And you would like have to do that for long lengths of time. It's not I like hope he they paid him very well because I man, highly doubt it. That was a small <laughs> ass freaking body in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I'll put some images up for this, but yeah, it, it looks super uncomfortable. Oh my god! Shit. Oh so it's like I definitely he gets you get. I'm gonna fucking get. <laughs> that is a that is a rough one, dude. Fuck, uh, my dude, my dude. 
Plus, I want another excuse to drink that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Princess Mombi. Yeah. Princess Mombi. I really liked her. I liked her. Her costume, her costume was like Mombi. one of one of yeah. my favorites for sure. I like that. Uh, she had like that peacock feather thing going on and everything. But they're like, like they're like they're like metal. Yeah, yeah they're like metal, metal or whatever. Noise. And it's it looks super freaking it, it cool. Cool. It when she's really first introduced cool. and she's playing that little uh, like a guitar, mandolin, the mandolin, right? Mandolin, yeah, a mandolin yeah. or whatever. Like, she just looks so damn pretty there with what she's wearing, playing that freaking thing. Think she's gonna be nice and shit. Yeah, yeah. not. She, she looks that way. She looks that way. She gave that uh, like bitch, uh dude. that look or whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> then you know. <laughs> She not nice, not nice at all. She locks, she locks her original head up because it's ugly as shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's all hide that fucking. I mean, would you expe- <laughs> like? Did you see the makeup on that too? Like her original face with the makeup and everything. Like fuck, yeah. man, tone it down. She, she had like the. Uh, <laughs> she needed it. Tone it the fuck. She down. had like she had like the uh, the Zool lines yeah. from Ghostbusters. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like uh, a lot of the costumes here were actually pretty fun to watch. Dorothy was very basic. Um, yeah, you know. But uh, as far as every other uh, character in the movie, uh, very, very innovative, very different. Uh, just a lot of color, just a lot of great look. So I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty good. You know, I really enjoyed the the wardrobe was was great. Yeah, considering you know, I don't think I don't know what the budget was um and what i know we'll get into that but i just i think they did they did, they did a great job with what they had uh-huh. yeah i agree you know let's move on to special, special effects special effects i gotta tell you guys the special effects in here i, I was i was okay with you know yeah so it we're gonna yeah we're gonna go over decent. like yeah like the, 19, the digital and the and yeah, also yeah, the claymation for a stuff 1980s freaking film it actually looked it looked it good looked pretty good it looked pretty good looked pretty i'm always good. a fan of claymation i don't know why i just i like claymation oh movies. man on Love the rocks and everything that was so freaking that, uh, yeah. creeped me out because that it kind of reminded me of like doing acid <laughs> <laughs> just like the different faces and shit that would like be making on the rocks was like uh no, no yeah. I, I this Why? movie definitely, <laughs> this movie was definitely fun when it came to the graphics and uh like the puppets and everything like that like the gump that thing was freaking cool. Um, yeah. I felt bad for him though. But yeah. <laughs> I know. I feel like the one thing that this movie was lacking was a little bit more of the world. I would I have enjoyed a little bit more. more yeah. But yeah. yeah. But I mean, it obviously they didn't. It, it's not like a full length feature like a three hour film you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so they didn't really get I'm into that they haven't done like a, a make it into a, like a series on there Netflix. is a there's several oh never yeah mind. there's several never mind yeah uh, they've definitely remade this quite a few times yeah and a lot different each time so um, well i feel like they haven't remade the movie there's different aspects to they've them. um added to the story so it's like they made the original wizard of oz then they did uh, Return to Oz. Then there's Oz the Great and Powerful. And then we have the animated show. There's uh, you know more continuation of the books. Yeah. There's graphic novels. Um, I believe there's even a video game. The fuck? No, I'm thinking. Oh. I'm thinking Alice in Wonderland. Nah, that one. Uh, that one. I. Um, but there's also a live action uh, Wizard of Oz show. Ah. Huh. Yeah. There's a lot. There's well, a there's lot. Quite a so bit. if you're, if you're a big, if you're a fan a of, if you're if you're a fan of Oz. I definitely would look into it. There's a uh, there's an anime version of it, like an 80s anime version that I used to watch as a kid. It's pretty cool. Ah. Oh, Dorothy-san. <laughs> oh, Dorothy-san. What is that total? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely the, the, the graphics were, def- they were super good. I, I enjoyed the graphics. Like, I mean, yeah, it's an 80s graphic kind of ordeal, but I thought it was good. Like when you see um, she's falling out of the sky and, I, I don't know how they did it, but I think she's just laying on the ground with her legs up, kicking up or whatever. Oh, yeah. It looks just, like she's falling and everything like that. It's just green screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. green screen and everything yeah. like that. I thought that was nice. The rock formations. and Like, nothing looked bad as far as special effects went. Yeah. Right. yeah as far as special effects, I think they did pretty good. With the one exception was the death of the Gnome King. And not like his actual decaying. is when he finally finished decaying, he was kind of like just an outline. I oh. didn't I didn't like that. I was like, that's weird. They kept like the triangle outline shape. Just, I was like, what, "What's happening here? I don't, I don't understand what's happening." I it would have made more sense if like 
the rock would have been crumbling off him and you yeah, see yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. A, a skeletal structure and then right. it just decomposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they left like an outline. I was like, uh, yeah. that's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the glass cases yeah. full of heads and everything like that. That was, that was cool. actually pretty cool. Dude, I love that. The glass case full of heads. Yeah. And that is, see, that's, that's another thing. Like, it's a creepy, it's a creepy thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they're fucking like she goes she goes into uh mommy's uh room so she can go into the uh her cabinet and get the powder of life out of her yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, her one little case, but she needs to get the fucking little ruby key and whatnot. And she fucking grabs it, and then mommy wakes up and she's like, Dorothy girl and all the girls wake up and they yeah. start screaming, they're like ah! That was creepy. I was like, it's like oh my god. <laughs> But then you see like mommy's body get up and it looks kind of goofy. It's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then when it starts walking, it actually, it looks more menacing, mm-hmm. you know, like kinda, a headless figure like, coming yeah. at you. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like pretty eerie was, feel to it. Yeah. Definitely. It was a little <laughs> eerie, you know, definitely a little eerie. But yeah. Graphics as far as that goes. Um, no complaints actually. Yeah. I think no we're complaints. good. I, I think thought it was actually that. pretty good. Uh, next category. Family friendly. This is a, one I made up specifically just for this movie because it kind of touches some, we touched some, like I mentioned earlier, we touched some issues here that I don't think are exactly family friendly, but yeah. it's also not like, it's all, I feel like it's also not. I, you know what? I, I'm right there with you. Um, it's not that, I think it's it not was horrible. made to be like a family friendly kind of movie, but it definitely had some dark features to it where yeah. you're like, uh, I don't know if I want my kids well, to be watching. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the never ending story, I mean, like nowadays, you know, where it's like a little, has some dark undertones. Yeah. Or I think that nowadays, one has a, a little, that one's a little my more. Kids will probably be like, Oh cool. Or whatever. Back then though, that, that, that would probably seem like a, I think too dark scarred of a kids. Movie. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't seen this movie when I was a kid, so this is the first time I saw it. Yeah. But I really enjoyed it. So yeah. I didn't really feel any of that, like, dark overtones and shit like that. I was like, man, that's cool. I you're like, it's a little bit darker. Like, a little dark. It's just, you're <laughs> like, it's a, it's, a, it's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with this. Like, you know, fuck it. Yeah, but to me, just imagine watching that as a kid. You know, when I first saw this movie, I think I was like six. Yeah. You know? so. I, was, yeah. I was a little bit older when I first saw this movie. I was probably somewhere in the round the realm of, like, 10 or 11. Okay. Yeah, I saw I saw a lot of those like movies early, like uh, you know, the Red Return to Oz, Never Ending Story, Howard the Duck. Love Howard the Duck, even though it's technically one of the world's worst movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, then, technically, I would say this is definitely a fr- uh, family friendly film. There are there are just some tones where you're like, okay, maybe, yeah. you know, it's only the kids watch this yeah. one scene with the headless people and whatnot. But I mean, yeah, ex- exactly. I think that's probably <laughs> the only scene. You know, kids are gonna see. Headless people eventually, so might as well let them. Okay. Be They're going to be seeing headless people regardless, right? Yeah, everybody <sighs> loses their head. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would definitely I would definitely think this is a family friendly movie. Um, I, I don't I don't think it's too dark enough uh, that I wouldn't let my kids watch it or anything like that. I, I I think it's actually a fun movie enough to where like, since one I don't have a family and two I like kids getting scared i'd say yes this is definitely a family <laughs> movie. this has the david seal of approval on it david seal. <laughs> yeah Bam. there you go family friendly you can, you, i can stand a little more <laughs> terror and darkness and then, <laughs> and I'll give it to you. watch your kids shit themselves yeah. awesome um, teach those kids right and have nightmares you little fucks so let's go <laughs> ahead and move on to the next category which is uh framework, framework. Framework. Um, I, you know what? There's, there's only actually, there's only a few scenes that I there's, love. There's, there's but like two most or of three it's whatever. scenes in this movie that I enjoyed. Yeah. Okay. And one of them just happens to be where Dorothy is actually walking into Emerald City, and you get to see the entire place like made of stone, like weeds growing up and everything yeah. like that, and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. The aftermath of the, the so war. yeah, the aftermath, the aftermath yeah. of that entire thing, and. Um, then when like the wheelers are chasing her, you get to see her run through like all the freaking rubble and stuff like that. So, I that's probably one of my one of my favorite freaking uh framework images because you see it from up top. Yeah, and when it's looking down, you can see her like moving around and everything like that. So, yeah, yeah, I thought that was actually yeah, that's a good shot. I agree. Yeah, I thought that's that was a good shot. Good. I agree. But you, um, I like the inside of the. What's that? Numba? Numba? Mombi? Mombi? Yeah. 
just like her, the sprawling sort of like palace that she's in and kind of like the mirrored room and shit like that. Yeah. I Which thought is, that was pretty Even the floor yeah. was mirrored. Yeah. So when was you, so when fucking she, trippy. I'm sure Dave was like, there. man, I could do so much cocaine in here. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 and shit. When she yeah. first do it walks, anywhere. When she first walks out in alive. there. Give me some of that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm alive! <laughs> <laughs> when she first walks in there, you see how dusty it is, how not taken care of it is when she, when you walk into like that hall. But once she starts opening the the door to, I guess, mommy's room or her. Yeah, everything's immaculate. Everything yeah. is I want to know spotless. who's cleaning that. <laughs> right? Who's cleaning that? that? Maid right? she got and doing. honestly, like the And how much trim. Windex is she going through? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the gold trim on all like the furniture and stuff was like really tacky to me. I was like, come on. Yeah, but some people are really into that. I mean, look at Donald they Trump. They can be. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's a tacky dude. Yeah. I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't even like polished gold. And, you know, like, but I bet you he would have walked in and was like, this place is pretty this nice. Good place. This is really <laughs> nice. place. My place is bigger. Yeah. <laughs> is that my chair? That's my chair. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely immaculate when you go into that room. Everything is freaking shiny, mirrors, chandelier. Like seriously, yeah. what fucking place. It's pretty cool. The door I like is pretty cool too because it opens <laughs> up like a triangle moves up and then two yeah. pieces move like out. A big M on the yeah, door. Kind of thing. It's yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. So that that's that's yeah. another. That's a good one. I like the one where they pan out from. Okay, so I like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 I like uh, I like when they're like escaping mombies and they're like kind of it's almost like a Star Wars scene where they're kind of like flying through the city right and it's all like miniatures and stuff like the the the, the wasteland's all miniature and like you see mombies palace like it's it's a pretty cool scene it's in the dark so it has like this cool look they're flying through and you know you got a nice little moonlight on the you know the little path that's all destroyed yeah um, that's a that's a really that's a really fun scene. I like that too. I like that scene. That's I a like good how scene. You can like look down below and you see the wheelers like coming at them, like yeah. just sort of like shadowy, like the moonlight's bouncing off of them. You know, yeah, like you can barely see them. I thought that was a really cool shot too. Yeah, there's some cool ones there. There's some yeah, cool. There, there. There's, like I said, there aren't many, but yeah, there, there were some that were actually pretty nice. Yeah, it's, I really enjoyed this movie. Not gonna lie, even though I'm fucking like 33. It was. It's a fun. Movie. It's a fun movie. It's definitely yeah. a fun movie. It's a fun movie. Yeah. Fun. Moving on. We're going to go with performance. You guys Let's want see drink? here. Another drink? Okay. Oh, another drink? Oh, Hell yeah, oh, I'm yeah. ready for another fucking drink. Yeah. Man, that is so tasty. I love the so fucking, fucking good. I cannot wait for that. Thank you. I love you. the fucking cube that he gave me, man. Yeah, that's really cool. Performance. So let's talk about Farisa Balk. So this is her first film. I was honestly very blown away with her performance, dude. It was really good, right? There was, like bad, the stuff actually. that she did, even when in Kansas, the way she kind of moved around and interacted with the set and everything, mm -hmm. it yeah. just seemed so yeah. organic and natural. Like it was very believable to see it from her. Yeah. And I, I was really, yeah, I was blown away and... I didn't have anything wrong with her performance at all. There was like ah, no dude. drop dialogue. I mean, seriously, for that nine-year-old to be able to do what, you know. <sighs> yeah, she was only nine. Training. Yeah, nine years old. This is her old. first fucking movie. She got the lead in her first film. A Disney film, no she, less. She was definitely uh, great. You can see the expressions on her face when she was actually like either sad or terrified. Like the movements and everything that she was doing is actually spot on. I, I have no problems with her playing uh, her role, she's freaking great. Um, another another character that I like, um, like I said, there's uh, the pumpkin, the guy in, that plays the pumpkin, Jack very, Pumpkinhead, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like his character movement. I like his ability to um, interact, like almost almost like the scarecrow, but he had his own personality with him, his own feel to it. You know, it wasn't like. Scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. This is just some different, but yeah, he he's definitely one of my favorite ones too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, performances definitely. TikTok I think was really good because he was he had a a unique feel to him, you know, because he was like definitely robotic but also had a personality. Yeah, you know, so I, I really enjoyed that. And the Gnome King was another one of my favorites. Yeah, the Gnome, the Gnome King. King was fucking really a really good performance. I really enjoyed 
that part of like the end of the movie. I love his cocky attitude. I love the fact well, he was that a powerful, he was, he's a yeah, powerful yeah, sorcerer. Yeah, yeah. No, but that's know? what I'm saying. I love the way he did, like he did him, you know, it was just like, so like, you can't touch me. You can't do nothing to me. I got you. Yeah. He's like, I got you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got you by the Ruby <laughs> slippers. Exactly. Oh, I love the fact that he was showing them off there. Too. Right. He's Wasn't like, that fucking, he's wearing, he's like, all like, you he's, like, like my he's like, he's like, he's <laughs> like, maybe you came back to get something and you, I like that they're hidden, like, in his cloak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, the cloak opens out and down, and the slippers come out. And then when he pulls them back, they the whole thing, I like how it closes in. You, They're completely yeah, yeah. concealed. You know, completely concealed. Exactly. Thank you, David. Um, I actually, you know what? One of the things I actually liked, and I think this is probably a different topic, is every time when one of them went into the cave to touch one of the things, the Gnome King actually looked more and more real. That's, that's the, the point. whole point. You know what I mean? And yeah, that's I the thought whole. That was like I thought that was super freaking cool because that that he was stealing he was stealing their life. Yeah. yeah, he was stealing their 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 life force, becoming oh, more my human. Mic was off just now. I hope it wasn't off this whole time. Uh oh. <laughs> well, we will find out. You did Remember, test it. You did did you turn it off it. when you went up there? I don't think so. Oh well. Okay, just try and keep just try and keep it up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in case you guys can't hear David, he might have turned we off apologize. his mic. That's so fine. It's fine. Just go with the flow of his actions. That's fine. Him, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Trust me, it's funny. Whatever. It <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, uh, the Gnome King definitely, definitely, he's him and uh, uh, Farusa Balk are definitely my two favorite performances in the movie. Yeah, definitely my favorite because he plays a great villain. Yeah, you know, he's definitely a great villain. He is a very powerful sorcerer, and that's why they don't want to fuck with him. Because he could literally, just like when they your fucking life. Yeah, he could have fucking just turned him to stone. They're like, they're like, just be glad he hasn't turned us to stone yet. Let's play his game. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He could have just been like stone. And that's it. <laughs> and roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> right? So what do you want? You got these fucking shoes, bitch. <laughs> Uh, he, he should do like a little Rick James thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, performance wise, I, I didn't have a problem with a lot of the characters. They were actually very good. I, oh, I, solid. I, I solid. Did. Yes, definitely solid. They're pretty good. So uh, we can move on from performance. And, uh, let's have another drink first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's go do it. Thirsty. Because oh, of David. David, David. Mm. Mm. God damn! <laughs> so tasty. Ah, uh, so tasty. It's the best. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. All right. So let's move on to the next category, which is going to be the budget. Um, I actually looked into ooh, the budget on this, ooh. and uh, yeah. So uh, again, this movie came out nineteen eighty. What Five. was it? Nineteen eighty-five. Uh, you guys want to guess what the budget is? How about you go first, Dave? I'll go twenty million. Okay, what about you? Um, it's hard to say. I want to say maybe twenty five. I don't think it got more than I don't think it got more than thirty. Yeah, I wouldn't think any more than thirty either. Well, or you guys are around the you know ballpark. The ballpark for sure. You guys are definitely around the ballpark. But we have uh, dugout seats. It's actually twenty eight million dollars that came in to do this movie. Okay, not bad. Twenty eight million dollars to do this movie. Uh, how much you guys think this movie made in box office? Yeah, I, ooh, you were I saying this say. wasn't that really. Yeah, well it did. Received. It just wasn't well received. Like I said, there was just some elements that uh, just didn't pan out. You know, unfortunately. Um, I want to say it probably made eleven million in the box office. Eleven million. Yeah. Ooh. About you taking a loss? Yeah, take a loss. I'll go with uh, thirty-five million. Thirty-five. Some. So I think some sort of profit. Right? I don't think they made any profit. Okay. Well, you're actually. Sp- Spot on. It's 11.1 oh, million. Fuck you. 11.1 million in the box office. This movie, so this movie actually was not well received with a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, you some, also got to think of the time. Some people know. did not actually enjoy this movie very much. Um, but yeah, uh, 11.1 million dollars for this movie. See, I went in this movie not having like the nostalgia of seeing it when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, and then like I was really like pretty blown away with everything uh, everything about it all i was really happy with the film i was like okay i don't hate it so that's really good <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's crazy to me that people are just gonna be like yeah some it. people did, did not uh did not like the this concept of uh 
like it's the Wizard of scary. Oz. I think they were trying to find something more uplifting and lighter and everything like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, you also got to think in the 80s, they had a, <sighs> that was like a, a like one of the best times for film, for like action, horror, comedy. Yeah. yeah. And this kind of fell in a weird place. You know, fantasy wasn't like a really big Thing I mean, you have like a never ending story, Princess Bride. But I mean, those are like, those were kind of the outliers, you know? Right. This one kind of fell between the cracks. It was missing something. Hmm. It needed, it needed something more just to give it that, that lift, you know? Yeah. I think make there was a little up. bit missing in this movie, but it didn't bother me so much. Yeah. I still enjoyed this movie. It's still, they told a good story. Uh, the characters are pretty enjoyable. solid. Uh, $28 million, but if you paid attention to the movie, there was not a lot happening. Uh, Definitely, uh, a lot of the uh, money went into the graphics and everything. Yeah, into the, to the production, uh, yeah, everything. Yeah, the whole yeah. production. A lot of the story was not being told out. If you t- if you pay attention to it, 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 it's it's a lot of the same shit, like over. Um, but yeah, they spent a lot of that money just to have the, the proper yeah. graphics for it. So. No, yeah, for sure. It's definitely, it's definitely. That's why. That's why it didn't take the way it should have took. So. But yeah, eleven point one. Nice fucking guess, by the way. Thank That's you. Actually yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty awesome. Wow. She. <laughs> 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 but yeah. Awesome. Twenty eight million dollars. Eleven point one. So That's, that's a bummer. definitely a bummer. Well, part um, of the reason I thought of that too is just like this movie was actually really hard to find. Like, it didn't get a lot of like VHS release. It also didn't get a lot of DVD release. Big surprise. And then. Yeah. You, can't find it anywhere on Blu-ray. So that's why, like, I was very surprised that they have it on Disney+. Plus. It's on Disney+. Plus. Disney+. Plus. I was so excited to see it on there. When I first saw it, I'm like, I'm watching this immediately. <laughs> 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 so I bought, I bought the movie on DVD, like, 15 years ago, you know? Uh, okay. But I just, I don't have it, I don't watch it that often, you know? So when I saw it on there, I was, like, super stoked. Yeah. I think there should have been, like, I would have, I think, really enjoyed this movie a little bit more had there been better camera quality. In yeah, that's filming true. Filming of this. Yeah. But, I mean, that's my only gripe, really. Other than that, it was still a good movie. Yeah. I think a little bit more camera qual- camera quality and a little bit more creative with the camera angles. Yeah. I feel like. Because a lot of it was very, like, directly like, is shot. It, is, you is, know? It in shot? is it framed? Yeah. Okay, go. Yeah, to be yeah. honest, <laughs> I kind of wish there was a little bit more storyline into it. A lot more of the adventure in between. To be honest, I don't mind there being too much adventure. And it was okay that they went straight to the Gnome King, I guess. But if they would have just had introduced like some side characters, anything like yeah, when they were like bit, a little bit confusing more just too much. It. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. You just stick with the, the story at hand, but maybe introduce like some characters in Oz that may, maybe like survived being stoned or being getting stoned or whatever. Yeah. And like, they kind of just come out of the woodwork and they help them get to the gnome King, you know, like anything, you know, maybe they stumble upon like a, a tree that like, you know, does something crazy. Some shit yeah. Be. Something, something in the fantasy realm. Well, with that being said, how about we go on and do the outro? Well, other than, uh, give us the outro, Georgie. That's pretty fucking deep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Outro. So we're in the the Gnome King's lair, and Dorothy is guessing all of the... Uh, she's guessing right for all the ornaments, so she's getting all her friends back. And the Gnome King is, like, reverting back to his gnome state because he's almost human. Like, it's like every, every aspect of him is almost human. He just needs Dorothy's essence to become fully human, like his hair and everything. Yeah. He's all human. Like, his skin's almost... It's almost like fleshy. It's almost you know, there. Almost there. And then she guesses the first one, the first one right. And like you can see him start to change. He's like, what the fuck? Like he's it's all pissed. <laughs> yeah. And that's and exactly then, what he says in the yeah, movie. He goes, exactly, what the fuck? He says, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but somehow it's still PG. <laughs> it's, yeah, <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> that bitch. So then Dorothy's like, <laughs> She's continuing to guess and release her friends that have all been turned to ornaments inside the Gnome King's little uh, ornament room, his little yeah. collection. And he's yelling at Mombi. He's like, you let her escape. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and she's like, it's not my fault. And like, he gets all angry. He reverts all the way back to like the gnome form where he's like all stone and like stuck in the wall. Yeah. And like, she tries to get away and he like flicks his hand at her and a fucking steel trap just poofs out of nowhere, poofs out of nowhere around her body. It's pretty awesome. I like that. 
I like the way they did that too. You got, you got to see him like now he's pissed. Now he's pissed. He's so now f- he's gonna use his. And shit, now he's gonna you know? use his shit. <laughs> now he's gonna use his shit. Yeah. And so Dorothy has almost basically unlocked everybody, except uh, TikTok and um, Jack. Uh, I think. Yeah. Is it Jack? Yeah. Scarecrow saves. Scarecrow saves uh, Jack. Oh, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, <laughs> the Gnome King goes in. Into the into the collection room, but he like makes a grand entrance. Like the fucking building starts shaking, the walls falling apart. There's all this red light, and like he rises up from the bottom of the shot, like the frame, and he's gigantic, like a mountain size, and he's yeah. all stop. And they're like still like fucking around, like trying to guess shit. And he's like stop, and they're like why? Why do you want to stop? He's like. I'm tired of playing games. <laughs> <laughs> he's, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> he basically is just like, I'm just going to kill you now. And that's <laughs> yeah, it. Exactly, like, he's right? fucking pissed. Right, I'm not fucking around <laughs> He's anymore. like, I'm not playing anymore. Yeah. And so he's like, how about the couch goes first? And he like grabs the couch. And this is really, I like this animation here. Cause it's all like, it's all clay. So they grab, he grabs the couch and he like, they grab the the gump's head and they take the gump's head off so they save his life i guess he's already he's like oh i didn't like my body yeah. anyway so they eat his like he brings the body or the, the the sofa like over his mouth and his mouth opens up like incredibly wide and then he drops the fucking couch into his mouth and he eats it he's like mm. and next pumpkin head and so like they i don't know why they waited this long they finally run away from him and as they're running <laughs> through the halls you see, uh, he he calls out gnomes, and all the other gnomes start coming out of the woodwork. Right, they're coming through the walls. The walls have like these like these clay like like wavy grooves in them, and you see all the gnomes like just their faces, their hands, they're pawing at you, like they're trying to get you. I don't know, maybe they can't come out of the walls, so but no, I th- you see some of them later, and they're out of the walls. I don't understand why they don't just. Come out fully Are and they chase them. Out of the walls, or do they poke out of the wall? Because I think they just poke out. I of think wall. I think they're some of them come out because some of them are on the floor at the end scene. Oh, so okay. Anyway, so they're running through, and the gnomes are chasing them and whatnot. And then, um, the gnome king finally grabs Jack and he grabs him by his feet. And so when he drags him, he lifts Jack, and Jack's upside down now. Um. And little to the gnome king, little does he know that inside of Jack's head is Belina. And uh, he starts to lower Jack into his head, into his mouth. And as he's doing it, you kind of see, they do a a down shot. And you see like into the cavern of his mouth. And it's like all fucking scary looking. Those of you that can't remember, Belina's the chicken. She's a chicken. Chicken. So he's lowering it, lowering it. And like his hand almost vanishes in his mouth. And then he was going to drop Jack. But you hear the chicken. I didn't sign up for this shit. Right? <laughs> and then he's like, you see his eyes like widen up. And like, there's like, you can actually see the fear in the eyeball, you yeah. know? And it's like, he's like scanning and looking everywhere. And then Belina pokes her head out of uh, Jack's eye, eyeball socket, I think. Yeah. And then all you hear is <laughs> like, she lays an egg. And it falls out of Jack's head, and he's like, huh. And then they do a close-up of the gnome's eye, and he looks down, and you see the egg fall, like, slowly into his gut. And then he, like, just closes his mouth, and he's, like, completely shocked. And he's just lowering Jack. And, like, all the gnomes are like, oh, they're like, poison, poison. And he's like, was that an egg? Yeah. And (laughs) And then he's like, they're like, what? He's like, didn't you know? Chickens are poisonous to gnomes. And he starts, like, decaying. This is where, like, he starts decaying. And it it looks really good at first, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, he's, like, his whole skin is crumbling, but then it gets to that odd little triangle shape. And then he blows up. Yeah. (laughs) And then uh, Dorothy gets the ruby slippers. And, you know, they got to go because the whole fucking place is falling apart. So she puts the slippers on. She clicks them three times. Goes back to the Emerald City, and they realize that TikTok isn't there. So there's the skeleton, or the skeleton, the pumpkin head, the scarecrow, uh, the gump, Belina, and uh, Dorothy are there. Yeah. But on Gump's horn is a 
green, um, it's like one of those badges, right? Yeah. A medal, sorry. Yeah. It's a medal. And so she, Dorothy goes to it, and she's like, oh, that might be him. So she, like, touches it. She's like, Oz, and sure as shit, it's TikTok. She saves the day. They stroll on up to the Emerald City. They have, like, a big old party and whatnot. Everyone, they no longer are stone. You know, they each come out of their thing. They have a little close-up of them. It makes me wonder, when you come out of being stone and you don't have your head... Like. For some reason, <laughs> their heads appear back. Uh, okay, I was just gonna yeah. say. It yeah. was like I was like, that's I was like, that's a plot hole. I felt that's a, I was like, that's a plot hole. I think they filled because they didn't want them to just fall over dead. Because that's really what would happen. Because <laughs> Bumby has their heads locked away in cases. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's why I was like, huh? Okay. Yeah. So they get back to the Emerald City. They're throwing a big celebration for Dorothy. They ask Dorothy to stay, be our queen, stay, be our queen. And she's like, no, I got to go back home. I got to go back to Kansas, you know. Man, fuck Kansas. Right? Fuck Kansas. <laughs> they ain't got no fucking apple lunch pail food and shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she goes, and they're like, all right, we're going to send you on our way, you know. And she's like, oh, it's so soon. She's like, crying. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. And then uh, Ozma sends her on her way. And so Dorothy wakes up and she's like, she has her face like sideways, like in the mud. And mm-hmm. she's like, goodbye, goodbye. Like staring off like into the water. Goodbye. And she's like completely by the, by the lake where she almost drowned basically. Yeah. yeah. And then uncle, uncle Henry finds her. He's like, Oh, I'd almost given up hope. And then like the rest of the search party shows up like, Oh, they're all happy. They found Dorothy. And it turns out that, the reason the power went off at the uh, the psychiatric ward was a lightning bolt hit it, caused a fire. Everyone got out except the doctor. The doctor died. And we don't know anything else about the girl. They didn't, I don't believe they mentioned anything about her. Yeah. But odds are she drowned. Oh, the little girl. Yeah. The blonde girl. Yeah. I wa- When I was watching it, I was like listening for it. I'm like, did they say anything about her? No, they didn't say anything I about her. I thought she was Ozma. She is Ozma, but she in 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 Kansas, she's a real person. Yeah. You sure? But, I yeah. thought she was just a figment of the imagination of Dorothy. That's what I thought the whole time. That's possible, but it, it can it's be, possible. But, uh, because how did she enter the room? I would say yes, a Because she well, she entered the room the same way she but left the room. The she opened time, the door. If you guys remember in the beginning when she broke her out, uh that lady actually saw the girl. She saw both of them. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, she saw both of them. Okay. So she's yeah, like, okay. you yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all yeah. Right. All creepy and shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the outro. That's great. Yeah, and then they show the the helper. She's in like the. She's in. She's all caged up. They're driving like, away. Excuse me, driving the buggy. I love the fact driving that she's caged up because that was the last thing you saw her in Oz being in a cage. Yeah. <laughs> so we get um, Dorothy goes back to the goes back with NEM and uh, Uncle Henry to the farm. Uncle Henry finally has the motivation to finish the house. His legs aren't broken his, now. Or whatever. Well, his leg is, leg is fine. You know, like even even Aunt May says even that, after, that leg's after mended. a day. That leg's like, mended. <laughs> you know, and uh, Dorothy's in her room. She has her own room now, and uh, she's looking in the mirror, and she sees Ozma and Belina, and she calls out to she calls out to Aunt May. Aunt May, you got to come and see this. And Ozma's like. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the They're going to take a crazy bitch. You want to go back there again? And she's like, what is it? She's like, oh, nothing. Just a reflection. She's like. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's kind of where the movie just ends. Yeah. You know? Pretty much. And uh, it's that's not, Return to You know what? It's not a bad ending, actually. You yeah. Know, we didn't even really go over the, nice. the chicken thing. The chicken thing was always kind of funny because, like, they keep asking about the chicken they, yeah, throughout the movie. Yeah, kept asking about the damn chicken. I like the, the wheelers, like, the best, though. The wheelers. So, like. Is that a chicken in there with you? <laughs> <laughs> he has a high pitched voice. Yeah. Um, we're not gonna explain too too much. No, no. I it, think we're but, uh, I think we're good here, and we I can. I uh, think that you guys should uh, watch this movie. I, I I enjoyed it. David enjoyed it. George definitely enjoys this movie, even though it didn't yeah. do well. I mean, I, I think it's still pretty good. I think it still kind of holds up. It's a fun bit. movie. It is a fun movie. Yeah. Definitely a fun movie. Uh, so. definitely give it a shot though. Yeah, give it a shot. let's uh, give it the rating here. Oh, rating. Mm-hmm. 
I I'm gonna go with three Judy Garlands. Really, three Judy Garlands. This movie's not horrible. It's not amazing. Like I said, we're not factoring nostalgia in because obviously for me it's a very nostalgic movie. I watched it a lot growing up. Yeah. But you have we have to take everything into account, you know. And it's just overall the movie's just it's a mediocre film. It is. It's a mediocre film, but it is a fun film. Yeah. You know, and just because it's mediocre doesn't mean it's not fun. It's a fun film. Yeah. If there were if there was just a few more elements put in this movie, it probably would have been a higher movie and it probably would have did better in the blo- in the box office. Probably. I'm actually in the same kind of in the same realm as you. Yeah. I was going to give this movie a three and a half yeah. uh Judy Garland's because it, like I said, I don't really have a nostalgia to the movie, but I did enjoy the movie a lot. Yeah. So uh I I'm think I think three is pretty fair. What do you think, yeah, David? I'm up I was to gonna it. give it a solid four. Oh wow. I think it's too high. Well, yeah. I'm still giving it a four. Okay. You st- <laughs> <laughs> so we'll meet in the middle and give it a three and a half here. I guess we yeah, can give it three and, we'll and, three and, and a half. That's that's fair. That's fair. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. David really enjoyed this movie, apparently. Yeah, it's yeah, a fun movie. Cool. Like yeah. I said, it's fun. I'm just taking into effect everything with the movie, not just Overall, yeah. it was fun. You got to take everything into account. Yeah, you know. I'm like, yeah, obviously, and it was just have that nostalgia, so I'm not bringing that. Yeah, in. it's so, just a yeah. little. It was just a, like you said. If there was another element that they introduced from Oz, that would have been so good. Yeah, you know, that's what I feel like they tried to do in Oz the Great and Powerful, but they added in so much it kind of took away from the Oof. movie. Didn't see that one. It's it's kind of falls in the same ballpark, you know. We're like. It's fun because really, it's an Oz, but thing is they give you a little too much Oz. So oh. there you're like, fuck, reel it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, damn, dude, too much. <laughs> it's like you need the, the right ratio. You know, that's the thing. Right. Needs better ratio. All right. Well, you heard it here from us. Three and a half. What would you say? Judy Garland? Judy Garland. Three and a half Judy Garland. So the movie is actually not too bad. You know, it's fun. We, we enjoyed it. We like it. Um Definitely give it a shot. Uh, Streaming on Disney Plus? On Disney Plus. So you can go watch it like right now. I like that it's on Disney Plus. I like that they're putting like older films like that, like on these streaming services, because it gives access to people who've never seen these films, yeah. you know, yeah. and didn't get like a DVD or a Blu-ray release, you know? Yeah. And so now they're they're coming out of the woodwork. So maybe this film will become like a cult classic. Maybe I mean it it's kind of people. Deserves. It's kind of already like a cult classic, but like it if it sees if it imagine just meets a whole new like you know whole new generation of kids and they they kind of fall in love with it. You know, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Well, that has been Return to Oz. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, please like, subscribe, give us a comment. Let us know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed this uh, episode, what we can do to turn it around, make things a little different, make things a little bit more fun. Uh, we'd like to hear anything that you guys have to say in the comment section. And we'll read it. I mean, we enjoy it. And uh, Helps George, the algorithm. George, where can they find us? You can find us on YouTube currently. We will have uh, social media and stuff coming up within the next week or so. And if I do get it up and running by the time this gets released, I'll just post it in the link. You know, post the link in the notes below. So keep an eye out for that. Um if you want to suggest a film or maybe shoot the shit with us, you can email us at uh, nyec.gse at gmail.com. Anything you want, man. If you want to want us to review, I don't know, Face Off or uh, <laughs> Goblin 2 or some shit. Whatever the hell we want. doesn't matter. We'll, we'll fucking we'll review it. So like always, just hit that notification uh, bell, you know, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, let us know what's up. And as always... Happy movie going. going. Cheers, boys. Cheers.